choices, isn't it? It's good. Very professional.
Good morning and welcome to Christ Church for this uh, service of Holy Communion and Baptism. What's she got? Sorry. You were over there. Right? You're moving around. Stay there. Yes, I know, I know. It's just so exciting. It's going to be great stuff. It's really good to see you all here this morning. If this is your first time here today, and so am I not loud enough? Pressing the unmute is all very well. Pressing the unmute is all very well, but if you haven't actually turned it on, it doesn't make a lot of difference. If this is your first time here today, particular welcome. If you're first time, you think, you know what? I think I might like to come back again. There are some welcome cards. If you'd like to fill one in, give us your details. We can email you with what goes on here at Christchurch. Um, a man is going to be preaching a little later on in the service. Um, when we get to communion, I will explain that. Uh, um, and there is one thing I have to do before we begin, and it is bans of marriage. For those that don't know what that is, bans of marriage are something that's announced in a church uh, in the months leading up to a wedding. Uh, it just means that it's all legal. So this is a legal thing we're doing here this morning. So, I published the bans of marriage between Oliver George Pickering of this, pas par uh, this parish and Bethan Kate Walton, also of this parish. This is the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. And we're just going to pray for Oliver and Bethan. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Oliver and Bethan are uh, come to a place where they wish to be married in front of friends, family, and you. Lord, we pray for them in these weeks leading up to the wedding, that it will be a time without stress, and the day itself will be a day of joy, and their marriage would be lifelong and full of love. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If uh, you are small here this morning, and you feel you need to make a noise or run around, feel free, you can do that. If you're bigger, and you feel you want to make a noise and run around, you're also free to do that as well. Uh, toilets are through in the hall, should you need to use them. Uh, um, and all the words you'll need this morning are on the screens, which have changed position recently, so now slightly in front of me. Uh, um, words that are in bold are words we all join in together. So, Eddie, if we could go to the... I can't see what's up there. There we go. Young and old, we are all his children. The family of God are here to worship him. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit, and has given us baptism as the sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin, that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity, and God calls us to fullness of life. We're going to stand now and sing our first hymn this morning, and the choir are going to lead us. Let's stand. <coughs>
taking your seats again. Uh, when we gather to worship God Sunday by Sunday, one of the first things we do is put ourselves right with Him. We say sorry for those times we've let uh, ourselves down, let each other down, and let God down. And we do that in words of a confession. And this, this is a, a slightly different words of confession. It's kind of words and then a response. And you'll see those words on the screen. So we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our crimes. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self centeredness Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the gods of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to stand in the choir. They're going to lead us in the glory. Screen, you'll see there's a word to say uh, collect. Collect is the collected prayers together of uh, the people of God. And week by week, we have a different one in the Church of England. So, this is the prayer uh, for the uh, 13th Sunday of the Trinity. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness now and in all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Can have our first reading, please. Our first reading this morning. Taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verses 1 to 7. 
Be silent before me, you islands. Let the nations renew their strength. Let them come forward and speak. Let us meet together at the place of judgment. Who has stirred up one from the east, calling him in righteousness to his service? He hands nations over to him and subdues kings before him. He turns them to dust with his sword, to wind-blown chaff with his bow. He pursues them and moves on unscathed. By a path his feet have not trodden before. Who has done this and carried it through, calling forth the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, with the first of them, and with the last, I am He. The islands have seen it and fear, the ends of the earth tremble, they approach and come forward, they help each other, say to their companions, be strong. The metal worker encourages the goldsmith, and the one who smooths with a hammer spurs on the one who will strike the anvil. One says of the welding, it is good, and the other nails down the idol so that it will not topple. Here is reading. Before we get our, to our baptism here, we always have something called baptism preparation, where we kind of let the family know it is what they're letting themselves in for, and uh, godparents as well. And uh, in conversation with the family um, when they came before, we were just talking about icing pop. Now, who knew icing pop? Fleur! Fleur! Did you know any songs by icing pop? Not that I want to admit to. Fleur knows a song called Stars. Now, do any of the rest of you in a school that has done icing pop? And then some of them. Was that a yes? Yes. Jill, did you want to help? Yes. Well done. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be glad to know that uh, um, if you haven't seen icing pop, it's a uh, music project which is done and uh, delivered uh, in schools all over the country. Um, and not so long ago, so long ago, Jill used to work for icing pop. And so. Uh, um, they do a complete set of songs, families then buy them on the CDs, they, in, they put them in the car, they burn their way into your brains and you can't get them out. It's really annoying. Um, one of the great songs they did was one called Stars. Um, does anybody want to come and help me in chill? Who knows? There's some them? teachers at the back. There's some teachers at the back who you know it. <laughs> teachers are going, no. <laughs> I have to do this in school. Why do I need to do this in the church? Yes, exactly. Fleur, can you want to come and help me, help me? Can you help me, help me, help me? Stop, stop. Stop, stop. No, no. Do you want to come and help me? Come on! Come on, you know, you know, you know. Come on, 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 you know, you know. Right, right. So when, so we, when we get to it, it, when we get, get to it, it, it goes, goes like this. this. Okay, the, 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 uh, uh, the chorus bit goes like this. Goes. Goes. The stars shining shine light, 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 and a rain rain cloud passes by. Do you know what that was? Singing a song, singing a song, singing a song, singing a song, singing together as one. Okay? Don't worry, don't, 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 don't have to do it, do it. but it's, but it's, 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 it's quite fun to do that, and the kids will love to do it. Okay, okay, so, so, so uh, start, 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 start,
Good morning, everybody. I'm Amanda. Chloe, you are looking very beautiful this morning, especially with that lovely headdress. And Sheila, I absolutely love the colour you're wearing today. It really suits you. You need to look at Sheila's beautiful green jacket. It looks really beautiful. <coughs> I'd like to say a prayer before we start. 
Father God, thank you for the amazing love which you show to us in so many ways. Please open our hearts to receive all that you have to give to us this morning. Amen. And thank you for your smiling faces. They really lift my spirit when I see lots of smiling faces looking at me. And I know even if you've got a mask on, you're smiling behind it. <clears throat> so, um, I can just about keep the screen to good. Think of one of your favourite people. It might be um, your spouse or your partner or your best friend. Think of one. Think of one person, this person, and if you have a look on the screen now, um, you can see five things. Don't think too hard, but look at those five things. I hope the words are big enough for you to read. Which of those five things would you like that person to do for you? What would, would, would you like best from that person? So, A, says that they say how much they appreciate you. Which one? Put your hands up if you think that's the thing you'd like best. They say how much they appreciate you. A few people, good. B, they bring you a thoughtful gift. What was that the thing you'd like best from that person you were thinking about? What do you think, that you think? C, does a really kind thing for you. Would you like that best from that person? Hands up if you think that is the best thing. Cute, so a few hands there. Brilliant. D, spends an hour in conversation with you. Is that what you would like best from that special person that you were thinking about? Pretty good one, isn't it? I've actually put my hand up twice now. <laughs> you can put your hand up more than once, but <laughs> try one. Finally, Gives you a big hug. That's a good one too, isn't it? We have come to the fifth in our series of the five love languages. So what is this concept of love languages? It's not something I've picked out of the Bible as such, but um, uh, as God is love. So when we're talking about love, then we are talking about things God says to us in the Bible. These love language, languages were first suggested by Gary Chapman in 1992 in his book, The Five Love Languages. I think there might be a picture of the book on the screen. Yes, um, I have it here too. There's actually a copy at the back for the quickest person who wants to borrow it, or you can borrow this one. really worth the read. It's, it's eye-opening and it's particularly aimed at um, uh, couples, um, but he has written other books as well, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, so this one was particularly about relationships between partners. On the front it says, how to, express, how to express heartfelt commitment to your mate. He has since written other books, many, many books, but some of them are The Five Love Languages of Children, there we are, on screen. The Five Love, love, love Languages of Teenagers, and both those books are for um, parents and carers uh, who are looking after teenagers and children. There's also the Five Love, love Languages Singles Edition, helping single people apply the love languages at work, in relationships, and at home. <clears throat> the most fundamental need for a human being is to feel loved by the significant in their life. Marriages break down because one or both partners don't feel loved anymore. Children may develop all sorts of problems if they don't feel loved as they're growing up. Friendships suffer if either friend doesn't express love or affection. Our love language is how we feel love at an emotional level, down in our gut. And we're all different. The things that make us feel most loved may not be the same as what makes our partner or friend feel most loved. These are the love languages you've heard about so far. I'm going to give a quick recap 
because um, as I'm the final one, I think I can probably do that. So here we have the first love language that we heard about from Simon at the beginning of August. This love language confirms the emotional power of physical touch. And it's the way some people feel most loved, like a touch on the arm um, or a hug. Uh, physical love, physical touch as a love language is not restricted to sexual intimacy, although of course that is um, a really good expression of love to your partner. And these are all ways um, in which people for whom physical touch, that is their primary language, feel most loved. And that might be you. Jesus was very physical in the love that he showed for others, getting down on his knees to wash his disciples' feet, touching those he healed, sharing the peace, or greeting one another with a hug or a kiss is a physical way we can express love to each other. The giving of gifts is another way in which people show their love for others. And it may be your primary love language. It doesn't have to be a big gift, but it does show that that person is thinking about you and that that person loves you. The evidence of God's reckless love for us is the gift of his son, Jesus. And we heard about that from Eddie um, the next Sunday in August, if you were there. Then two weeks ago, Andrew led us in thinking about the love language of quality time. And he told us how the Christians in Rome spent quality time listening to the Apostle Paul and also spending quality time with God in prayer. Giving undivided attention to your partner or friend is quality time. <clears throat> Last Sunday, Simon helped us think about acts of service modelled by Jesus who washed his disciples' feet cooked his disciples a meal, served those he walked with in many different ways. Jesus did the ultimate act of service in that he gave his life on the cross that we might be saved from our sins. And the fifth love language that we're going to be talking about today is words of affirmation. <coughs> words can be spoken written, or even sung. We can speak words of affirmation to each other, or to God, and we can hear them from God as well. So, just, just like you need to keep your car's fuel tank filled with fuel, each of us has a love tank. And that picture is not a fuel tank, is it? But it's the best tank picture I can find, a water tank, but a love tank. Each of us has a love tank, which needs to be full if we're going to feel loved, but also good about ourselves. In order to show love to our spouse, our family, our friends, we need to discover our primary love language, and we also need to discover their primary love, love language. That was what I meant to say. We need to discover their primary love language. If you speak someone's primary love language, that love tank will be full and they will feel secure in your love. However, if you don't speak their primary love language, even though you're showing love in other ways, their love tank might not be full and they might not feel loved. So that could be an answer to some rocky relationships. How do we know what our primary love language is? Well, the mini test I did at the beginning might suggest which one is your primary, or maybe you've got a couple which you tend to more strongly. Most people tend to one, but some people tend to one or two. So, um, your partner or friend says how much they appreciate you, then that is your love, that is the love language of words of affirmation. Eddie, do you want to click and it'll come, that's it. <laughs> well, thank you, Eddie. Eddie's doing the PowerPoint for me. <laughs> um, so that's what we're talking about today. Speaking words or writing words. Or your partner or friend brings you a thoughtful gift. That is giving gifts. Or your partner or friend does a really kind thing for you. 
that is, acts of service. Or your partner or friend spends an hour in conversation with you. That is quality time. And finally, if your partner or friend gives you a big hug, that is the love language of physical touch. Or you can go to the Love Languages website and do an online test with 30 questions. Or in the back of the book, there is a little test for you to do. So I'm very happy to lend you the book or give you a copy of the test if you would like a little bit more um, uh, information or if you'd like to do the test yourself. What love language does God speak? It says in the first letter of John that we love because God first loved us. These love languages that are observed in human relationships are all reflections of the love that comes from God. If God made us in his own image, and if we do have these five distinct love languages, then we can expect to find all of them expressed in God's character and in his nature. Thank you, Chloe. It's lovely to hear your affirmation. Thank you. <laughs> God can speak every love language. He is love, so we can expect that. It's not surprising to discover he can communicate fluently with us in our love language. Gary Chapman has written another book called God Speaks Your Love Language. I would go for that one. If you're going to get a Gary Chapman book, that one is even better because it summarises the five love language, love languages and then it goes on to talk about how God uh, can communicate with us and how we can communicate with him. It's really, it's full of really good advice. <laughs> As we're looking at words of affirmation, I'm going to be concentrating on how God affirms us through his words. But I also challenge you to find ways that God <coughs> affirms you through the other four love languages. Because he does, affirms us through all these love languages. So how does God show his love to us through his word? Let's turn to the Bible to sample some of God's amazing affirmations of love to us. We know the Bible as God's word, so anything we can find in the Bible can be an expression of God's love to us, even though perhaps originally it was written to Jewish people or his disciples. <clears throat> now all of you should have, I hope, a little bit of paper with some boxes on. Could you just wave if you haven't got one? You should all have a little bit of paper that you were given when you came in. Brilliant. Good. You may not have words of affirmation as your primary love language. So it's a good chance to develop this language that you're not so familiar with. So this is for everybody. If it is your preferred love language, then just revel in these affirming words that are coming from God to you. Pick one of the quotes from the Bible and just let your eye drop on one and stick with it. Whiz around, find one you like. I'm going to give you one and a half minutes of quiet, and it really doesn't matter if he joins us in this. It doesn't matter if it's not quiet. But I'm going to give everybody else one and a half minutes of quiet to spend with these words. Read the phrase or the word silently to yourself as we sit quietly. And if one or two jump out, you concentrate on those. These are God's words of affirmation to us. So I'm going to time a minute and a half. So have a look and see which ones God is saying to you.
slightly short of it. It's ever such a long time, isn't it? Maybe it's in a half. <coughs> or secondly, how can we affirm God through our words? So you've just been listening to God. You might not have felt that you were listening to God, but he can speak to us through his words. So whatever came into your head, um, perhaps think, think on that. Um, um, in the quiet after the service. Praise and thanksgiving are ways that we can affirm God with our words, turning to the psalms or hymns we're going to sing. We've already sung, we're going to sing later as well. Those can help us find the right words to praise God. So now, um, uh, Eddie, if you can go to the next slide. Thank you. On this slide, hope you can see it all right. Um, there are some thanks and praise suggestions. This may not be something that comes naturally to us, especially if words of affirmation are not our primary love language. Again, I'm going to give us a minute and a half, maybe short, slightly short of that, to practice affirming God through thanksgiving and or praise, and perhaps begin to develop our words of affirmation um, if it doesn't come naturally. In the silence, thank God for several things he has given you. It might be family, house, job, health, or smaller, specific things. Something that happened this morning. Praise him for a few things about him or what he has done. Praise him for what you heard from him in the last minute and a half. So a minute and a half now to affirm God. Time's just about up. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you didn't have enough time to say that Frank, that thanks and praise to God in there. Um, <clears throat> there are certainly plenty of things I thought of saying. And there are definitely some pointers in the Bible readings that we um, had today to help us affirm uh, uh, each other and to affirm God. Now, the Bible readings today particularly um, um, help us to think about how we can affirm each other. So this is my last thing I want to talk about. How do we affirm each other through words? In the reading from Luke, the Gospel reading, we were reminded that the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Words of affirmation which come out of our mouths are the result of what's going on in our hearts. So warm words of affirmation for each other are a fruit of genuine love and concern for another person. In the Isaiah reading, I love the way that the people in the Isaiah reading, the Old Testament reading, how they affirm each other. It was a slightly confusing reading. I don't know how much you remember of it, but these are the words. Words on the screen are the last couple of verses in the reading. I'm not sure who these people are who are saying these things, but look at what they're saying to each other. They approach and come forward. They help each other. That's how she acts at isn't it? <laughs> and they say to their companions, be strong. The 
the metal worker encourages the goldsmith. And the one who smooths with the hammer spurs on the one who strikes the anvil. One says of the welding, it is good. That last line, wasn't that said to the welder? Hey Joe, I think your welding is fab this morning. Or was it said to the goldsmith and the metal workers, have you seen Joe's welding? It's fab, he is doing such a good job. So that affirmation, actually it was indirect affirmation, wasn't it? He was affirming Joe, the welder, by telling other people. So that's actually a really strong way of affirming someone else, by affirming them to someone else. The very best is in their hearing, or if you affirm someone to someone else and then it gets back to them, how, how full does that make their love tank feel? How full does it get? they hear that someone has been affirming them um, to other people. So after, as we meet after the service, we might meet here. There's also a Zoom meeting to meet some people who can't be here. As we connect with our loved ones or go to work next week, let's affirm one another through the words we say. Or maybe we can write something to a friend who's not with us. I've chosen uh, a hymn which we're going to sing a little bit later in the service because it contains words of affirmation from Jesus. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and live. It's an invitation from Jesus to us to amazing life. So um, um, I'll introduce that a little bit later in the service. So let's keep each other's love tanks full by speaking words of affirmation to each other and even other love languages that we've heard about. Thank you very much. Well, after that excitement, let's take a few quiet moments uh, to play for our world our nation, our town, and our own church community. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, would you please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we ask you to protect and sustain the, the Afghan people as they endure terrible times. May you comfort them, both those who fled their country in fear of their lives and those who have been forced to remain against their will. May you soften the hearts of those intent on wreaking death and destruction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we ask you to strengthen those who are working to give shelter and protection to refugees. In our own county, we think especially of the caring work of GALAS, Gloucestershire Action for Refugees and Asylum Seekers. We thank you for the local councils and other housing providers, including our own here in Cheltenham, who have pledged to shelter some of the refugees now fleeing Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Creator God, forgive us for our careless stewardship of your work, as reports confirm that 2020 saw an unprecedented level of greenhouse gases in our planet's atmosphere. We ask you to prosper the efforts of governments to combat climate change and give world leaders the wisdom and courage to do what is needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, at a time when the number of new COVID infections is on the rise, bless our health workers and others who are combating the virus and comfort all those who are sick and fearful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we ask for your blessing and affirmation of those who contribute so richly to the life of our community. 
for our council and our local businesses as they face major challenges such as reviving the local economy after the pandemic, for our charities and voluntary workers as they care for the most vulnerable members of our community. In particular, we pray your blessing on the Cheltenham Housing and Support Forum as it meets in early September to discuss initiatives to reduce homelessness. We also ask you to strengthen and affirm our church, our, our church community and those who serve us, uh, Rev Simon, Rev Eddie, Rev Mike, um, our readers, our church wardens, our church council and officers, our choir, our staff and our volunteers. May they be of one mind in working for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for those who are going through difficult times and need our love, and especially for June, Jane, Jack, Rose, Christy, Anne, Daphne, Rosemary, Brian, William, Jane, Keith, Anne, Angela, Anthea, and Pat's family. Now would you please join me in saying these final words. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are going to sing now, the, sing, the, the, the hymn that I've chosen is I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say and I Chose It because it contains lots of words of affirmation from Jesus to us. So let's sing.
With this bread, that we break, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. We'd like to please take your seat. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven song. darkness Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean this is his story this is our song Hosanna in the heights the crowds came out to see your son yet at the end they turned on him on the night he was betrayed he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people this is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the Highlands. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which you died to set us free. To find death, you rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirits on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live with you and be welcomed in your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, and of the Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, and let us give us our sins, forgive us our sins. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
God's holy gifts to God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Most merciful God, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sins. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. If it is your tradition to take communion, you are welcome to come forward. Communion at the minute, owing to uh, COVID, is in one kind only. So there's just the bread, so if that's something you'd like to do, you're very welcome to. If you'd like to come forward for a blessing, alternatively, you're also very welcome to do that. Just keep your hands down so we know that. Don't feel that you have to do either of those. You're very welcome to stay in your seats instead.
God is our creator. You feed your children with the true man, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us to the body of God and Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls up to be a living sacrifice. Send us out of your spirit to live and work to your praise now. Amen. We're going to stand now to sing our last song this morning. Fill thou my life. Let's stand and worship God. to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. We have one last thing to do before we go. We'll stay standing for that, but Cleo, I'm afraid to say you're asleep, so <laughs> it's going to mean nothing to you at all. However, um, you'll see behind me is a pastoral candle. This is a candle, uh, we get a new one every Easter. The symbolism is Jesus, light of the world. So we get a new one of those every Easter. And uh, I have a candle here, which we're gonna be handing to Cleo. Clearly, that's a really bad idea. So we'll give it to parents or godparents. Uh, and basically, I encourage you to light this on birthdays or, or Christmas or the anniversary of the baptism and remember what happened. So I'm glad you want to hold I trust you with fire. This is a really bad idea, Mum. Really She's stepping up. I've always been told. <laughs> and also a, a gift as well. This is a book called Stories Jesus Told. It's absolutely superb. Uh, it's Nick Butterworth and Nick Kingpin who have done all sorts of kids' books. But this is one with um, um, Bible stories in it. But I suspect you may have to read this to your sister. But I'm sure you're going to do that as well. And that's for you. <clears throat> So God has delivered all of us from the dominion of darkness 
and has given us a place in the saints in light. Cleo, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to Jesus.